I do not have any financial interest in any of the products mentioned in the presentation. Retinal vein occlusion remains second only to diabetic retinopathy as the most common retinal vascular disorder and treatment, especially for the associated macular edema that can severely reduce visual acuity, has always been challenging. Underlying associations, advancing age, systemic conditions, raised triopy, inflammatory diseases, hyperviscosity, and acquired thrombophilic disorders. The classification, we have the ischemic and non-ischemic CRVO, hemispherical and hemicentral CRVO, BRVO, and visual acuity can be lost due to retinal ischemia or cystoid macular edema caused by capillary leakage with endothelial cell damage combined with increased intercapillary pressure, promoting exudation of extracellular proteins, interactive fluid and blood, and precipitation of lipids in the macula. Vision threatening complications, chronic macular edema, macular non perfusion, neovascularization. The solution. No proven effective therapy currently exists for central retinal vein occlusion. Patient prognosis is dictated to a large extent by the severity of the occlusion and the natural history of the disease rather than by compelling evidence that any intervention actually alters the outcome. Researchers are looking in multiple directions for new and effective therapies for retinal vein occlusion. Whenever you start seeing a large number of newer treatments being developed and tested, it means that we don't have a definitive therapy for the disease. Current experimental treatments range from intravitreal corticosteroid injection to surgical procedures. Although some of these newer approaches appear promising, the evidence demonstrating efficacy is not yet definite for any of them. The exact pathogenesis of the occlusion is poorly understood, but various local and systemic factors appear to play a role in the pathologic closure of the retinal veins. Such retinal vein occlusion remains an important cause of visual loss. Impact venous drainage leads to retinal hypoxia with upregulation and release of vascular endothelial growth factor. And VEGF increases vascular permeability and leads to the breakdown of the blood retinal barrier with the development of the macular edema. Treatment strategies for macular edema and CRV are currently under evaluation focus on Bedge of blockage. The pathophysiology here, you see the vasodilatation, leukostasis, diapodesis, and intravitreal pharmacotherapy has revolutionized our treatment of retinal vascular disease, including retinal vein occlusion. Although these intravitreal agents are effective, our understanding of the specific indication and long term goals is still evolving. The pathogenesis of macular edema is generally related to the upregulation of the VEGF A, which may act on capillary hyperpermeability by increasing vesicular transport and or lowering the abundance of tight junction proteins among the endothelial cells. Therefore, it seems rational to inhibit VEGF A with the intention of normalizing the inner blood retinal barrier, reducing vascular leakage and macular edema, and improving visual function. Short term clinical trials have shown the effectiveness and safety of intravitreal anti VEGF A therapy for treating central retinal vein occlusion. The approved treatment for central retinal vein occlusion, laser photoviolation, current standard of care, however, poor vision persists despite treatment. Dexamethasone approved for BRVO, CRVO, in the U.S. and the, in the European Union, significant visual acuity gains achieved versus sham higher incidence of elevated intraocular pressure. Rani Buzmab approved for RVO in Europe, Switzerland, Turkey, India, Bangladesh, Chile, and various countries. First level, one, one evidence for efficacy and safety of Rani Buzmab in BRVO available from the Bravo study. Transmarastate not approved and Pagaptamlimab not approved. The Rani Buzmab and anti vegf has now been approved in the EU uh, for the treatment of visual improvement associated with the macular edema due to the retinal vein occlusion. Intravitreal injections of ranibuzumab appears to be a safe and effective option in the treatment of macular edema secondary to retinal vein occlusion. Nevertheless, because the natural course has demonstrated a possible improvement in vision in almost one quarter of the affected eyes at three years, individualized repeated intravitreal injections of ranibuzumab showed promising short term results in visual acuity improvement and decrease in the central focus thickness in patients with macular edema associated with the BRVO. Uncertainties persist as to the long-term risk of recurrent occlusion or progression to retinal ischemia. Though rare, the incidence of heart failure and transient ischemic acts is higher during the second year of ranibuzumab therapy than during the first year of treatment. The ideal regimen has not been defined, but it appears that monthly injections early in the course control edema and may help to limit disease severity in a large percentage of patients over time. Treatment should be individualized based upon timing and severity of recurrent 
edema and or progression of non perfusion the role of adjunctive treatment yet to be defined but it's clear that which of antagonists provide excellent first line treatment that has dramatically improved visual outcomes in patients with retinal vein occlusion pegaptin sodium is known to be safe and efficacious as treatment for macular edema secondary to branch retinal vein occlusion studies have shown that with three months follow up both visual acuity and macular edema measured by oct and fa dramatically improved many studies have found analogous and identical measured by the oct and visual acuity responses to bevacizumab and ranibizumab with limited adverse side effects in branch and central retinal vein occlusion now we come to the combination therapy combination therapy for macular edema associated with venous occlusion disease is an option with a possible advantage of using different mechanisms of action while possibly not as good as monthly ranibizumab monotherapy in retinal vein occlusion it does provide an option for patients who need more flexibility in their dosing schedules anti vegf and ozidex steroids retain considerable appeal mainly due to their much easier dosing schedule studies have found that 20% of ozidex recipients required only a single anti vegf injection for an entire year the implant is designed to be delivered once every 6 months but that is still a great advantage over the 9 or 10 injections a year necessary in ranibizumab therapy although tramsulone and ozidex lack the level of parity that exists between lucentis and avastin combination therapy obviously has drawbacks in terms of intratracheal pressure and will be used judiciously in patients with glaucoma but it does enlarge our arsenal in the battle against macular edema due to retinal vein occlusion it is very difficult to define which treatment is best to start with tramsulone can be helpful which was shown in a recent study but a recurrence can happen avastin also has a temporary effect internal limiting membrane peeling can be beneficial too but we also see recurrence of cystoid macular edema after it late treatment of edema to the retina is difficult all imaginable consequences of procedure shows that a combination of various therapies need to be evaluated to prevent the recurrence of cystoid macular edema and cystoid macular edema after crvo is a complex disease sometimes required a combined treatment consisting of anti vegf vitrectomy with internal limiting membrane peeling and gentle laser photocoagulation the intravitreal use of fda approved nimbusumab and the sustained release dexamethasone along with the off label bevacizumab and preservative free tramsulone has significantly expanded our treatment options and replaced standard of care for treatment of retinal vein occlusion associated with macular edema anti vegf therapy rarely seems to further compromise retinal circulation however worsening of macular ischemia in the long term cannot be definitely excluded particularly in eyes with significant ischemia at baseline and after repeated intraocular anti vegf injections the decision to offer prolonged anti vegf treatment in case of significant coexisting macular ischemia should not be based only on measurements of macular thickness instead repeat fluorescence and angiogram should be performed vegf blockage has been proven to improve visual outcomes in patients with macular edema due to crvo however an important and disadvantage of anti vegf drugs is the need of frequent reinjections and even more frequent control visits further advances are needed in order to improve quality of life and reduce the burden to healthcare systems as an editor i would like all of you to use the as a mobile or the ipad for the ajo thank you